Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when new content is released. Enjoy the video. One of the things that really intrigues me is this idea. And I heard it many, many years ago. I'm not even sure of the original source where I heard it. But it goes like this. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Albert Einstein once observed that uh, you have the most fundamental and major decision that you have to make in your life is this. Do I live in a friendly or a hostile universe? Which is it? Is it a universe that is filled with hostility and anger and people wanting to hate each other and people wanting to kill each other? Is that what you see? Because when you see the world that way, that's exactly what you will create for yourself in your life. This is from great scientific mind. And the interesting thing is that this is not just a, a clever play on words, that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. It's actually a very scientific thing, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. I'd like you to imagine the following scene. You're in your house. You've got your car keys in your hand. The lights go out. Power failure. You can't see a thing. You stumble around in your living room and you drop your keys. And you look around for a moment and you realize that you're never going to find them in the dark. But you look outside and you notice that the street lights are on. So in your mind, a light bulb goes off. Hmm. I'm not going to sit around here in the dark and grope around looking for my keys when there's a light on outside. I'm going to go out here under the street light, and I'm going to look for my keys. <laughs> Why are you laughing? This, is, this makes a lot of sense. So you're out here, and you're groping around, and you're looking for your keys, and you're looking and looking, and your neighbor comes along and says, what happened, Wayne? Well, um, I dropped my keys. Oh, I'll help you look for them. And the two of us are now down here looking for our keys. They're looking. Finally, he says to me, excuse me, but um, where did you drop your keys? Well, um, I dropped them in the house. He said, you mean to tell me that you dropped your keys in the house and you're looking for them out here in the street light doesn't make any sense. And I said, well, it doesn't make any sense to grope around in the dark when there's light out here. Now you laugh and you think how silly that is, but isn't that exactly what we do when we have a problem, a difficulty, a struggle that is located inside and we're looking for the solution outside, someplace outside of ourselves. It would be like going to the doctor and telling him all of your symptoms and the doctor says, oh boy, you've got a lot of symptoms. And he starts writing out prescriptions. You need a prescription for this symptom, you need a prescription for that symptom. And finally, he gets this four or five, and you go to walk out, and you say, well, I'd like my prescription. She said, no, 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 I'll give this one to your mother-in-law, and I'll give this one to your neighbor, and I'll give this one to your daughter, and I'll give this one to your father. I mean, you're the one with the struggles and with the difficulties, and giving expecting somebody else to change or something outside of you to get better in order for you to make your life work at this level that I'm calling intention is something you have to really take a hard look at. It's in here. We have to see the question isn't whether I'm connected to this field of intention. The question is how ready am I to keep that connecting link absolutely corrosion free. And I used to ask the question many years ago from studying philosophy and teaching it for many years, who am I? Who am I? I'm pretty much at peace with that now. I really think that who I am is a, is a piece of the divine source disguised as a, an author and a father and a writer and uh, uh, someone who uh, d delivers these kinds of uh, talks and, and so on. It's all a disguise. I remember when someone asked Mother Teresa, what do you do every day in the streets of Calcutta? She had a wonderful, profound answer. She said, every day I see Jesus Christ in all of his distressing disguises. I see the unfolding of source, the unfolding of God, the unfolding of spirit in all that I encounter. 
and I see it in myself as well, and I see that and know that. That's not the question that bugged me the most. The one that puzzled me the most is, where did I come from? Where did I come from? You ever ask yourself that question? I used to ponder that. I can remember I lived in a series of foster homes for a while when I was a young boy, until I was about nine. And I lay out, out in Mount Clemens, Michigan, I would lay out on the grass, and I would look up, and I'd see these endless stars. There was an apple orchard out there. And I could just lie there on my back, and I'd just look up, and I'd say, where did I come from? Where did I come from? And it's not about reincarnation. I always liked uh, Eleanor Roosevelt's response when they asked her if she believed in reincarnation. She said, uh, I don't think it would be any more bizarre for me to show up in another lifetime than it was for me to show up in this one. <laughs> it always kind of made sense to me. You know? It's hard to figure all of this out. But where did I come from? Where did I come from? So you ask yourself this perplexing question, where did I come from? And most of us, when we, when we think about that question, we come up with, uh, with an answer. And the answer is, as hard as it is for us to even imagine, our parents did it. <laughs> it's a tough one. But uh, in one blissful moment, one drop of human protoplasm in some mysterious way collided with another, and life began at this, in this microscopic dot. Now, I used to, <laughs> I can remember years ago, we had, uh, we had four children in seven years. And um, my daughter, my teenage daughter, Stephanie, at that time, was, uh, well, she had to take on a lot of the helping responsibilities around the house when these babies just kept showing up. <laughs> and we found out that we were going to have another child. Another mysterious uh, thing happened. And um, <laughs> another child was on its way. And my wife and I flipped a coin to decide who would tell Stephanie. <laughs> and I lost. <laughs> so I cornered her one day when she was in a really good mood. And I said, honey, you're not going to believe this, but uh, we're going to have another baby. Oh, that's great. And her hands went. <laughs> Instant pose. This is it. This foot here, this one out here. You know. That's terrific. I said, well, it really is. I said, and you should probably be glad that we didn't have the same attitude that you have when we found out about you. <laughs> she said, yes, but how do you think it feels? I said, well, why don't you tell me? She said, no, Dad, how do you think it feels to be the only kid in junior high school who has parents who like to do it? <laughs> I said, Steph, I know this is going to be hard for you to accept, but uh, grandma and grandpa do it. <laughs> that is just sick. That's all I can do. Oh, she's storming out of there. Huh? So when we think about where we, came, we come from, that, that sort of is the place that we get to in our hearts. But just go back to that moment for a second and understand that, uh, remember what I said earlier, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Just keep that idea in mind. Because if you go back to the time of your absolute beginning into the material world, you know that there was a microscopic dot. And this microscopic dot included everything that you needed for this physical journey. And you can't even see it with a microscope. It's just, it's too, it's just too mysterious and too mystical to even contemplate, isn't it? That something as tiny as, a, as, a, as a, you could get a million of them on the head of a pin contains everything that you needed for this physical journey. Everything. Your birth was in there. The, the shape of your eye is in there. Your height is in there. The color of your skin is in there. The, uh, you know, I hold a hair up on the pillow and I say, and I've had this experience several million times. Uh, <laughs> what held it in yesterday? You know? <laughs> and you must ask that question, like, what held them up yesterday, don't you? Or, uh, 
Why was it black yesterday and it's gray today? Where did that one come from or whatever? And all of these changes are in this microscopic dot. So what I'd like to do just for a few seconds here is to go back to take the microscopic dot that is your beginnings in which there's a future pole that is created every face and every body and everything in here and everyone out there watching today in that one instant miraculous moment everything that you needed for this physical journey was in there